So thinking about uniting a team behind a common goal, for me without one, it's a little bit like going for um, a walk in the woods as a group uh, without a map. Uh, you've absolutely no idea where you're going uh, or how you're going to get there. I'd set the message out straight away. When you're trying to get your team to work towards a unified goal, um, it's really important for them to understand what that goal is. Uh, but equally as important, why you're working towards that goal. So for me, a team goal um, must align to uh, and support what you want to achieve as a business, first and foremost, because if it doesn't clearly, then you're going to head in the wrong direction. I think it's a really good idea to engage people um, in defining the, uh, the team goal. Um, and from my experience, that gives everyone a sense of buy-in and that they've contributed to the goal, um, as well as when you move forward, a sense of engagement and motivation to actually deliver what it is that, that you want to achieve as a team. What the process is, why we're going for it, what we'll get out of it as a business, what we'll get out of it as individuals, and, and, and just as importantly, if not more importantly, what our customers will achieve from that goal as well. Um, so communication is absolutely key. Um, and I think the last tip I would give is, it's helpful to remember your audience uh, and tailor the goal according to um, the, the audience and, and their preferences and, and their skills, knowledge and, and background. So keep it really clear, um, make sure it's easily understood and make sure it's memorable. The last thing you want is a goal that stretches over three or four pages of A4 because frankly no one's going to remember it. Start with the basics. I think the basic in any relationship building is, is trust. So expectation setting right from the very beginning, what you need from your team, what they, your team can expect from you, um, and just keep that two-way conversation going really. I think credibility is absolutely vital. So when you're delivering messages to people, make sure that you have done your homework, you understand exactly the message that you're delivering. Okay, so some key ingredients to creating open two-way dialogue. Um, for me, it starts with um, establishing rapport and trust and taking a genuine personal interest in people. Now, I'll admit that's not something I've always been absolutely brilliant at, um, but every day I work to get a little bit better at it and hope I'm succeeding. Um, I think moving on from that, it's really important to create a safe environment where people can express their views without fear of consequences. Um, and depending on the people involved in your teams, you might need to give some people more encouragement than others to do that. And I guess almost give them permission to express themselves because they may come from a background or an environment where they're just not used to that. Understand the impact um, and think ahead as well. Have your devil's advocate head on. If you think that somebody is going to to challenge a decision, to be uncomfortable with a message, try to preempt that. Make sure you are fully prepared and that you're open and receptive to that. And then I think also open to a dialogue has to be fostered between people in teams and not just between the leader. Um, and the team members um, and that I think is equally if not more powerful um, to team working um, and to really strong team relationships if you can achieve that. Equally sometimes the decision that you've made or the message that you're delivering might not necessarily be the right one uh, so it's showing that you are open to challenge that you're comfortable in having those conversations and that you are leading your people from within rather than control and command. I think the last tip I'd give is, as a leader, to listen and act um, on what people tell you, at least some of the time, if not maybe all of the time. Um, and I find that if you can um, uh, sort of capture all of these key ingredients, that it's massively rewarding as a leader when you get that right. Um, for two reasons. Firstly, it gives you really good feedback about yourself and your own leadership style. Um, and secondly, it encourages really great ideas from within your team for your business. Okay, so thinking about being consistent and using different approaches. Um, for me, first and foremost, I think it's important to recognise that as people we're all different. We have different values and opinions, different learning styles, the way we communicate uh, differs uh, between us, how we process information is different, um, and so finding common ground can sometimes be really hard in a team. But, a bit like what I said in terms of creating a common goal, Taking time to define how you operate and behave as a team and the sort of culture and environment that, that you want to exist, um, I find can often create common ground between people um, who are very different. If you have, um, if we look at reward and recognition for an example, if you have somebody in your team who is an introvert, the big 
presentations in front of everybody, the fuss, absolutely will not be what they're looking for. It will turn them off, it will make them feel incredibly uncomfortable and actually can have a real reverse effect. So make sure you know your individuals, know what makes them tick and make sure you tailor your communication style accordingly. Um, and then as a leader it's really important to live up to that culture and environment and, and way of behaving um, that your people have said that they want to, um, to live up to. Um, acknowledge it when you see it and catch people doing something right um, as well as calling it out when you don't see what people have said they expect to see. Um, and, it, and whether you're praising it um, or calling it out as a, as a challenge, um, do it in a way that respects the individual. Equally, with your extroverts, if you're giving them the reward and recognition that you feel they absolutely deserve, then what works for some people, which is a simple thank you, real recognition, might fly under the radar for them. So know your team, know your individual, make sure everybody is comfortable with how they're being spoken to. Um, and then I always remember someone saying to me, treat people the way you want to be treated. I've got a slightly different take on that, which is I think you should treat people the way they want to be treated. Um, and I may not always get that right, um, but certainly from, from experience, trying to do the latter is more successful than the former.